Hi everyone, I'm Anna from Geo Marvel, and today I'll be walking through how to use some of the analysis tools for ArcGIS notebooks, specifically the function interpolate points. So the first thing I'm going to do when I see uh, when I open my notebook is I'm going to see this boilerplate code, import statements, and in addition to those, I'm going to add a couple extra. With these two, I'm connected to my ArcGIS online account. Uh, and then I'm going to import these extra functions so that I can display this content and then actually do the interpolate points analysis. So once I've got this ready, I'm going to run this cell. I can see that it's in progress. And when it finishes, I'll see a number and I also see my username. So I know that I'm logged in and ready to go. So from here, what I'm going to do is interpolate points and what that basically does is it takes a point layer and extracts information based on an integer field and will create a polygon layer of values as guesses based on the point layer. So in this case I'm doing air quality and I'm going to use this daily AQI value field from these points and what it's going to do is it's going to guess the air quality index for the state of Virginia. Now, in addition to my ozone layer, I also have this Virginia state polygon layer that's just gonna set the bounds for my interpolation. So from here, I'm going to bring these layers into ArcGIS notebooks through the use of variables. So GIS, this uh, variable set up here, is what connects me to my content in ArcGIS Online. So what I'm going to do is this dot content, which is a property of the GIS, and then this dot get function, which is similar to search, but different because instead of query or uh, title or item type, it just passes the one parameter, the item ID. So it's only ever going to return one thing. So I'm going to do it for my ozone layer and my border layer. And I ran that and I see that those are there. And then just to confirm, I can display my layer, uh, Virginia Ozone. And when I run this, it shows information about the layer so that I know it's the correct one. So from here, I'm going to actually run the interpolate points uh, function. And I have this interpolate points function. I'm going to pass it into a variable just so I can see it in notebooks and from here I have a couple required parameters and then uh, I added some additional ones for the sake of the demonstration. So for interpolate points I need the input layer Virginia Ozone which has to be a point layer and then the field that I want to interpolate based on uh, and it's an integer field and in this case I want the daily AQI value for all of those monitoring stations in Virginia. From here uh, these are all optional parameters. The next thing is the interpolate option and that tells the function how I want them to interpolate. So the default is level 5 and that is going to balance speed and precision for the interpolation. Uh, level 1 means that it's going to interpolate quickly but it's not going to be as precise and 9 means it's going to be really precise but it's probably going to be a lot slower. So for the sake of the demonstration I'm just going to try 9 uh, the next thing is this output prediction error parameter, which is just a Boolean, and it means that when it runs the interpolation and creates a polygon layer, it's also going to create an error layer, which basically just tells you how close it thinks its predictions are to what the actual values will be. And in this case, I'm going to set it to true because I do want to see that at the end. I then have classification types, uh, which you can read about in the documentation, but I'm choosing uh, this geometric interval classification type, which basically will balance the values with the area available for my interpolation. From there, I can choose the number of classes that I'm going to have for my interpolation. Uh, the default is 10 and the max is 32. Now, for my daily AQI values, they're actually really similar. So I think going with a lower number of classes is probably my best option. So I'm going to choose 8. And then from here, this bounding polygon layer, that is why I brought in this Virginia border layer. 
And what it does is instead of just coming up with like a square interpolated area, it's just going to calculate it inside this polygon, which is useful because I don't want to interpolate a huge area. I just want Virginia. And finally, just a name for my layer. So I'm going to run this. So once it's here, I see that it's finished when the number appears. And I can do display. I can run a display to actually see my layer. And I'm going to open it up. And from here, I'm going to see it in the map viewer. And it's going to come up with these classes. So I see my interpolated Virginia layer. I've got my five classes here. Uh, and then I also have this errors polygon layer below it. So if I turn this layer off, I see how correct the interpolation thinks it is. And I see that there's higher error out here, which makes sense because in my original point layer, I don't have any values for this area. So that's one way to use ArcGIS Notebooks for analysis. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.